Hello and welcome to lecture number 10 where we're going to cover IPOP controllers and the API between controller and Chincat. So as mentioned in a previous lecture, the idea behind separating controllers from the TinCan data path is inspired uh, in, uh, in some ways by OpenFlow and software-defined networks, and the idea is to separate concerns between uh, the low-level packet handling and uh, creating and uh, managing links, and that's the responsibility of TinCan, from the policies uh, when to create a link, when to terminate a link, how to map IP addresses to links, and how to route uh, throughout the overlay. So TinCan, as we've seen in the previous uh, lectures, provide the core functionality that's needed for any VPN uh, to tunnel IP traffic over P2P links. And it relies heavily on LibJingo and OS APIs. It's performance-minded, and hence uh, this is implemented in C++ with uh, C uh, for low-level um, tap device uh, bindings. Now, the controller can have uh, an implementation that's typically on a higher um, level uh, language, and our uh, implementations typically use Python, but you can use any uh, programming language of your choice. Uh, all you need to worry about is the API uh, that talks to TinCan, and we're going to uh, begin to peel that API today. So the API uses uh, an RPC style of communication, uh, with JSON uh, for a um, mechanism to pass arguments and uh, uh, responses. And it's over UDP, typically uh, on a, lo a local uh, connection, uh, a Unix domain socket within a uh, Unix computer, for example. So different controllers can implement different modalities of VPNs. For example, the social VPN Every user determines who they want to connect with, and IP addresses are dynamically um, assigned and translated. Whereas group VPN, it's a different modality where you have a group owner who decides who joins the group, and then every user in the group uh, connects to every other user in the group by just establishing a relationship with the owner. You don't have to establish n-square relationships with every uh, user in the system. And in group VPN, IP addresses are not translated. So these two are just two different Python controllers that use the same underlying API to communicate with TinCan. So the API uh, exposed by TinCan has a number of calls that are initiated by the controller, and then there are a number of up calls that come from TinCan to the controller. Uh, and in our white paper in the IPOP project website, there's a lot more detail than I'm going to be covered, covering here. I'm just going to highlight the key calls and what they accomplish and from that point you should be able to uh, follow uh, the details that are presented uh, in the white paper. There's also notifications from TinCan up to the controller and I'm going to again cover uh, the more important ones and I'll leave more of the details for, the, uh, for you to follow through the white paper. So here's one uh, first call and that comes from the controller down to TinCan and this registers what social network TinCan is going to use for interactions. At this point, uh, it's XMPP. You could conceivably uh, come up with other online social network backends that don't follow the XMPP protocol, but currently this is what we uh, enable. So this allows the controller to configure TinCan uh, with what XMPP uh, service you use for notifications and for user um, uh, for creation of new links. Another API call lets the controller establish a callback endpoint for any notifications uh, coming from TinCan up to the controller. So this is an endpoint IP port uh, that basically the TinCan uh, process can send messages to you and the controller will receive and handle them. So the controller has a server running to a UDP server running on this IP port to listen to uh, callbacks from TinCan. Uh, set local IP, the controller uh, establishes what is the user ID of the IPOP node that's running uh, locally and also what's the IP address that uh, the local uh, IPOP node should use and net network mask as well. So that's done once for the node that's running. 
uh, set remote IP is done every time a new node joins the network. So it establishes the mapping that I described earlier that's used by TinCan to look up, based on IP address, which link should forward uh, a message should be forwarded to. So it establishes a mapping between the user ID uh, uh, of a uh, the IPOP UID uh, and IPv4 or IPv6 uh, addresses. Create link. This is where the controller asks TinCan to create a link to appear given its ID. So this provides what's done in turn servers to use. Also, uh, the fingerprint of an X509 certificate, as I mentioned earlier, and the list of the endpoints that are going to be used uh, by this node. This also determines whether encryption is to be used or not. Trim link does the opposite. Uh, given an existing link, it will terminate the link and relinquish all the resources associated with it. Keep in mind that links have to maintain connection information and they also have to maintain keep alive messages so that uh, net uh, mappings don't expire. So they, they do use resources. Uh, if a link is not being used productively, it's a good idea to trim it. Uh, send message. Uh, this a is an API. The name here is a little bit um, uh, confusing, but basically it allows a controller to send a message to another controller, not through TinCan, but through the XMPP um, uh, notification system. So this goes through the XMPP server. This is intended for messages that are uh, small and infrequent. You don't want to tunnel packets through this mechanism. Okay, because this goes through the centralized server. It's not a P2P call. Uh, get state uh, queries the state of tin can links. This is useful if you're building statistics about uh, what are the peers that you're connected with and how much packets have been transferred between you and them and other uh, information. So this re requests state and it results in a number of calls that come back from uh, tin can up to the controller. Uh, the local state for the local node, and then peer state for every peer uh, the node is connected to. So this comes up from TinCan to the controller to the uh, callback uh, endpoint that I mentioned earlier. Uh, local state will provide what is the ID, uh, IPv4, IPv6 addresses, and uh, the fingerprint of the node. Peer 6 will also tell about uh, every peer that you're connected with, what is the status? Is it online, offline? Is uh, security being used? Uh, how many bytes have been exchanged with the peer? And what connection endpoints are being used? Uh, this up call from Tin Can to controller notifies the controller when a state changes in a Tin Can link. So, what is passed up here is what is the identifier of the peer for which a state change has taken place and what's the new status? Is it online, offline, or unknown? Now these are the important uh, important messages that are used for establishing new links, establishing a new connection between endpoints. Uh, this notification connection request is triggered when a remote controller has sent a connection request to the XMPP overlay. So we saw these messages earlier, but now we're going to see how they actually go uh, into um, a through tin can up to the controller and how the controller can make decisions about connection requests. So the request is sent through the XMPP overlay. So for example here, remember the example where Alice sends a message to Bob, says, I want to connect to you, uh, and this is the endpoint that I want uh, that you should try to connect uh, over the physical network. Again, this message goes through the XMPP server, reaches Bob, and eventually, uh, it initially handled by the TinCan module, and eventually uh, passes uh, a connection request message up to the controller. And again, it's up to the controller now on Bob's side to decide how to deal with this message. It may decide to create a link, it may decide to ignore uh, creating a link as well. Connection response is the um, uh, other end, if you wish, of this uh, request response for connection uh, or link establishment. This again is sent through the XMPP server, and it's almost identical to the connection request, but it's sent as a reply to the connection request. 
So here, when Bob, uh, when Alice sent a message to Bob, if Bob replies to Alice saying that, yes, I want to connect with you, this is a connection response. It comes again through the XMPP server, goes to Alice, and now goes up to the controller as a connection response notification. So these allow uh, Alice and Bob to begin to negotiate a direct connection with each other.